welcome back to my channel. Recently, I went out judging at a dressage day and there were a bunch of really simple, straightforward things that people were getting wrong and um, those things brought their score down. So I thought I would share those with you today and maybe next time you write a test, you'll be able to do these simple things better and get a better score. The first thing is the center line. It's such a straightforward thing, uh, but if you don't get it right, the judge can't possibly give you the score that you deserve. So practice the center line. It's the first and last impression you're going to leave with the judge, and that's in their mind while they're tallying your scores. So if you make it a good one, then you're going to be better off. So when you're at home, practice your center lines. Make sure there aren't any curves, Make sure you can ride it straight and on the line and stay on the line until you need to turn either right or left. Um, it's so easy for riders to drift off the centre line, especially if you compete on grass. The centre line are also, is also easy marks to get because of the way it's written on the test sheet. So you should ride straight from your entry at A to X, whether you are outside the arena or you start on the inside. Uh, really hit that center line. Unders undershooting it's probably better than overshooting it because if you overshot it you've got to do a big wiggle to come back and that'll be really obvious. And when you come into halt, halt straight, halt square. Now I know that's what you're looking for but what that means is that your body stays straight, your body stays square and don't fiddle it. As soon as you start fiddling the halt, that's when there's um, movement and you can unbalance the horse and they'll take a step to the side and then the judge can't give you um, the mark that you might have deserved initially. Also, the rider can be crooked in the saddle on entry uh, or one side of the rider is stronger than the other side, so the aids will be stronger, say on the right. The right aids might be stronger than the left and that pushes the horse away from the right side. So really come in thinking straight and thinking even in your body. And again, so you've finished your halt, you've picked up the trot and you want to ride straight from X to G. Don't really make sure you hit G, careful not to go either side. And that's the most common thing I see, you know, whenever I judge. Use your corners. You're not expected to go too deep uh, when you're riding the lower tests like prelim and especially on grass it's not always practical to go super deep into your corners but um, I've, I've definitely seen a few corners that were straight from C to M or C to H and that's not really going to demonstrate that you um, know how to use your arena or that your horse is supple and showing impulsion. Okay, make sure you're preparing for your movements. And using your corners is part of that process. And prepare for your movements much, much earlier than you think. Uh, lots of people prepare for their move for the next movement four or five meters from the marker, which is way too late. Uh, you should really be thinking about what you're doing about 15 to 20 meters ahead. Uh, so learn to ride and visualize the different circle sizes that you need. So, you know, we've got 20 meter circles, 15 meter circles, there are half 10 meter circles, full 10 meter circles, and then as you get higher and higher, of course, they get smaller and more difficult. But when you're riding the 20 meter circle, either from B or E, uh, I and L are not your touch points on the center line. If you ride, if you're riding from, um, the, the markers and the points and then you're touching at I and L, your circle is going to be shaped like an egg and your judge is going to be able to tell. Also in the lower tests there are loops and so the loops go from M to X and then back to K or you know the same a mirror image on the opposite side. So with loops there's nowhere really to hide. So you really need to practice these, ride them at home, film, get them filmed if you can and so that you can see that they're accurate and if I'm the judge at C the horse must pass over X and that is right in front of me as a judge so when you do film your loops at home 
put your videographer at C or A and just make sure the horse is passing over the marker at X and not, you know, a foot either side isn't going to be accurate enough. They really do have to uh, go over X. And that way, you know, the, the judge can see that you can ride accurately. Your horse is obedient to the aids and nice and balanced so that uh, you can put the horse in a, in, in a particular place and they'll stay there or that's where they'll go. You know, that's what you're trying to show the judges in your test. And if you can't ride your horse over X in your loops, then, you know, they can't give you those marks uh, that reflect the rhythm and balance and suppleness and impulsion and all of that. So except for some of the prelim tests, uh, the canter starts at the marker. So in prelim, you'll probably have the opportunity to canter, for example, between C and M or C and H or the similar down the other end. And with that, so during in your prelim tests, during your canter transition, you can get that in between those markers. It sounds, you know, this is what's written on the test sheet and read your test sheets carefully without, uh, you know, before you have to memorize them. And that way you'll really know where they're going to be. Um, so what that means is you, you shouldn't be doing your canter transition at M, you should be doing it before. And usually it's a corner. You know, the prelim tests want to set you up for success in the canter transition. So it gives you that, um, space in which to do it make sure your canters in the corner worst case scenario by m but if you're not getting your canters uh well before m at home then that's something you need to practice and get right after prelim in novice and higher your canter transition is at the marker so you need to be ready and ready to go at the marker uh, not not asking at the marker because you know it's not going to be um you're not going to be prepared enough if that's what happens you need to be asking well before so that by the time you get to the marker your horse has struck off into the canter and you're away into your movement and some tests the canter transition is at c now that's no accident when you're doing a transition at c there's nowhere to hide the judge can see everything that's going on and uh sometimes you will make a mistake and you know like that's that's dressage so just keep going it doesn't matter um with your prelim canter transitions if you can put your body between the judge the judge's eye and the horse's head often the judge can't see if you've got a contact issue in your transition um, and that goes both ways so if you are struggling with your canter transition in your prelim test Make sure it's in the corner and that way your body will block any view the judge will have of your contact, uh, potential contact issues. That's a little uh, side hack, but if you're going off to a championship or a big show, then you really need to have that sorted out before you get there. Okay, the next thing is that in, in any test that you do, you're going to make mistakes. And what you wanna do when a mistake happens is just pretend as though you knew that was going to happen. Um, it's completely on script. You don't see a problem. Um, you know, soldier on, keep going. If your face tells the judge that you made a mistake or that was an error or you didn't expect that to happen, they are going to know that, uh, you know, it wasn't quite as smooth as it could have been. So really poker face, um, performance face, uh, whenever you're doing your tests and that will really you know it won't give anything away to the judge um, and so therefore it won't affect your score at all similarly if your horse isn't listening to you or uh, your aids aren't working for whatever reason really avoid you know giving your horse a big kick or giving it a big pull in the mouth it's not the judge isn't going to look on that kindly and you, it's not really something you want to be doing. If you do that in, a, in an arena, you're also giving your horse um, a poor experience and they might remember that next time and you know take that with them and hold on to that a, a bit. And that's not really the way you want to go. So if your horse isn't listening to, for example, your canter aid, just ask again. And if 
you know, it's all information. If the horse isn't listening to the right canter aid, then that's something to practice a bit more at home. And it's just, you know, maybe you weren't ready. You thought you might've been, but perhaps you weren't. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we all have to find out uh, what we're ready for at some stage. And it's all just, you know, information and feedback. Don't forget judges are human. They will, you know, they feel the whole <laughs> range of human emotion, of course. So if your judge is feeling empathy for you, then that is going to be in your best interest. Whereas if, uh, you know, if you've done something in the test that puts the judge off a little bit or makes the judge think, you know, these perhaps aren't the values that I'm looking for in an arena, uh, then that's going to be reflected in your marks. And really that, that ties into, you know, what I said previously about giving your horse a big kick in the, in the tummy or a big pull in the mouth. You want, to, you want to give the judge the impression that we all have the same values. You know, I, I wouldn't give my horse a big pull in the mouth and so the judge is going to see that and you know, that is going to be reflected in your marks. At the end of every test, regardless how you feel, give your horse a big pat and a big smile as well. This is going to tell the judge that you're really happy with what happened. You're happy with how it went and you're happy with your horse. You had a nice time. It also tells your horse that you had a really nice time in the test. And, uh, you know, you want the experience in the arena to be a positive one. Keep it positive, keep it happy, keep it light and, uh, you know, do things that will make the, give the judge that impression. A big pat, the smile, and this will um, hopefully, you know, make the judge feel empathy for you. And if that gives you one more point, then that's one point you didn't have before. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching my video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.